Hey, what's up? It's Andrew here from Offshore Audio, bringing you tips and tricks to make you a better live sound engineer or run better live events. I just want to speak a little bit about speakers, talk a little bit about delay speakers before, and today I want to talk about front fills. What are front fills? When you graduate to bigger speaker setups, you start running into more and more sort of classifications of speakers. I don't mean like you know, big powerful speakers or small little speakers or 12 inch or 10 inch or line of air point source. I'm talking about like zoning, right? You start to talk about zoning of these speakers. Your stereo mix starts to be delivered to different zones in different amounts. And you might not even deliver the whole mix to every zone. The most common ones you're going to come across is the sort of main delays, the ones that are hanging further out in the room to supplement the sound. And we talked about that in a previous video, which I'll link to in the description below. The next one you probably come across are front fills. So in this video, we'll just have a little chat about what front fills are, why and when we need to use them, and just a little talk about other things to consider when setting up front fills. So without further ado, let's dive in. So what are front fills? Simply put, they cover the front of the audience listening area. All speakers have a limited angle of coverage. And if you look up the specifications for speakers, you'll normally find a vertical and a horizontal dispersion angle. What this means is that this, this is the sort of angle from the center of the speaker in which sound moves out the way and that you are likely to get the full benefit of the speaker. If you are off axis, that is outside of this area, you're likely to hear drop off in high frequencies. You are still going to hear sound because lower frequencies wrap around stuff, diffusion, we won't get into it, but you will be able to hear the speaker, but you will not hear the same frequency response or perhaps even the same sort of phase response as you would if you're standing in the coverage angle. If you're standing in the coverage angle, that's sort of when your speaker is guaranteed to function the way that it says it will function. So if we look at something like a Yamaha DXR speaker, right, these are pretty common where I am, you'll see that it has a vertical coverage of 60 degrees and a horizontal coverage of 90 degrees. So that's quite a wide shooting speaker. It's fairly standard for a point source speaker, but it covers a lot more area than something like a line array speaker because its intention is to be used as a sort of main PA to cover a large area evenly. You could probably cover a small venue, maybe a hundred people or so with two of these speakers in the right size because the coverage is wide and even and also because of the expectations of the venue like that. So if your stage is three or four meters wide and you have your speakers at each side of it, you're quite likely to get a pretty good coverage of the whole audience if the audience is only, you know, five, 10 meters back into the venue. As the stage gets wider, as the stage gets larger, these two speakers are further from each other and this angle, you know, that's at 90 degrees, it doesn't overlap in the same way, right? It doesn't cover the same area. And so we've got these two speakers, right? They're playing like this. And so when they're close together, you see that they're sort of, they're, you know, it's it's going to cover this area. But as you move them further from each other, there ends up this hole in the center at the front of the stage. And if people are standing there, they're not going to be able to hear the vocals. That's the first thing that they're going to lose. They're not going to hear the vocal and they're not going to hear the guitar as well, though arguably in a small venue, they're probably getting blasted with the guitar amplifier. But you have a coverage problem at the center. So front fills are the speakers that we use to solve that particular coverage problem. Front fills cover the area of the audience at the front of the stage, which the main PA speakers don't cover adequately. Why and when to use them? The short answer of when to use front fill speakers is when your PA doesn't adequately cover the front of the audience. You need to listen, you need to stand at the front where the audience will be and listen to the PA system. It's also important to choose your battles. Speakers take up space, right? And front fill speakers are frequently placed on the lip of the stage. You really need to ask yourself, does my stage require a front fill speaker? If it's a little basement with two speakers and a small stage, even if you stand at the front and you don't quite hear everything, it might not be that important. There's a lot of things to consider, like is the speaker going to take up a bunch of space on the stage? Is losing that space a bigger problem than losing a little bit of fidelity? In a 150 capacity basement venue, quite possibly you need space more than you need the speaker. Back in Glasgow, when I worked in a little venue, I had a touring act come through and the guy insisted on a front fill speaker, which was not, you know, specced in the venue. So he chose to abandon one of the monitors from the stage, like take the stage monitor and turn it around and play it into the audience. But the stage is only 30 centimeters high and that speaker was just playing into everyone's knees. Maybe the front row got a little more of the vocal. Waste of time, 
waste the sound check. That's a situation when you don't want to use them. A situation when you might want to use them is when you have a larger stage. What if you have a conference or something and the people in the center can't hear the speech properly? If you have a 10 meter wide stage, this is a real example, and people are sitting right at the front and they need to be able to hear what's being said. That might be a good time to grab a conference speaker, grab a stage monitor, shove it in the middle and connect it up to your mixer. Ultimately, you need to decide if it is going to better the audience experience. There is no black and white, there is no formula to decide if that's something that you need, but you need to understand how your speakers are projecting sound, how your new speaker will project sound and interact with the previous speakers that you have set up, and if you have the resources to make that happen. That's time, speakers, cables, people to make it happen. If it's not going to happen in time or it's going to eat into your sound check, then maybe it's not that important. Of course, this is all really only relevant for small venues because in larger venues, you might have front fills set up as standard, calibrated properly, or in even larger venues, you probably have a system technician who is solely responsible for setting these things up. I am not a system technician. I am not going to tell you how to become a system technician. So how are we going to deploy these front fills? Like I said, the aim of this video is not to make you a system technician. That is a whole career path. It's to give you an understanding of sort of crucial elements that make up PA system. It's to give you an idea of how to rough it in if that's what the situation demands, because versatility is sort of the ultimate skill in this business. So in this situation, we don't have a system technician, we don't have venue drawings, and it's a medium sized venue that needs a front fill. My tips are as follows. Try and find a speaker that is the same brand as what you're using. When you start to mix and match brands, it gets harder and harder to make the speakers play well together. Set up a matrix output on your mixer. I'll leave a video tutorial down below and you can check that one out. But you're going to create a new matrix for your front fills and you can connect those front fills up to the mixer, to the stage box as a separate matrix output. So let's take a look at the tutorial. So to start with, we need to make sure that our master fader is sending our mix to our front fill matrix. Right. I've got my matrices set up here already. I have a video on delays where I go a little more in detail and all the setup process. So if there's anything that's unclear here, you can check that video out in the description down below. But what we do is we press select on our master fader, go to home, press right on the pad until we get to sends, and then we can use these encoders to turn up the send level. And I'm just going to set it at zero. That means that I can use these faders here to control the balance between main PA, delays, and front fills. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to make sure that the correct signal is coming out of the correct output. We're going to click on our routing tab, page over to the outputs section, and you'll see the physical outputs listed here on the left and the mixer groups or channels or matrices that are being sent out over here on the right. So you can see that seven and eight here, I have set to my matrix one and two. That's because that matrix, the first matrix pair, is my main PA. Outputs five and six, I have set to matrix three and four, that's my delays. And then outputs three and four, that's the XLR outputs on the back of this mixer, are routed to matrix five and six. Now I'm happy that I know where my front fills are coming out of and I can connect them to the right place. So we need to get on to setting the delay on our front fills. On this routing screen, you see there is a little delay icon. That means we can press this dial here to turn our delay on and we can use the dial to punch in the time. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to boot up our EQ and we're going to roll off the low end. Those low frequencies tend to be more omnidirectional, so we do not need to reproduce them in the same way for the audience at the front. They get plenty from the main PA. Now comes the important part. We need to walk the room. We need to go down to the front fill speakers and stand right in front of them, right at the edge of the stage, and say, do I hear what I need to hear? And then walk back slowly until you start to hear the main PA take over. And just think to yourself, is the delay natural? Are you pretty aware that there's a difference in delay time between the main PA and the front fill speakers? Think about that with your delay because you're always going to need to fine tune it slightly. Another cool trick that you can do is you can use groups to send only certain elements of the mix. But for now, you can assign all the instrument groups, drums to the drum group, bass to the bass group. And then you can send only selected groups through that matrix by selecting the subgroup itself and then clicking on home, paging over to sends and sending that to the matrix just like you did with 
the main fader. Maybe not something you're going to think about. Cool to know about anyway. Let's sum it all up then. On medium to large stages, the main PA speakers often don't cover the whole audience area properly. So we need front fill speakers to fill in the area at the front of the audience in front of the stage. These are additional speakers that we add in to supplement the main PA on the front of the stage. Similar to delay speakers, they will require a bit of delay to make them match up properly and a little bit of EQ to make sure that the correct frequencies are sort of being played to the audience because you will have interaction with that main PA. You might also selectively not send bass signals to those speakers because you're right beside the subs anyway and they're very omnidirectional. But like I said, I'll leave links down below for you to check out some other videos if you don't know how to do all of this. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to the channel. It helps me know that you like what's coming out and what to make in the future. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.